No trading, forever stuck at level 3, and potentially some dying. Welcome to Let's Build a Level 3 Iron Man. Hello, and welcome back to the Level 3 Iron Man Progress series. In the last episode, we made some significant progress in terms of getting to unlocking Poison Dynamite, which is going to be probably the biggest highlight that this account has to offer. And for this episode, I don't want to end things off until we've had a chance to blow something up. So that's what our primary focus will be going forward here. But of course, first we'll start off with AF King, some willow logs outside of the barbarian assault and getting 50 wood cutting, which is pretty great. I'm on my way to 60 so that I can unlock the castle wars route of the balloon system, which will be a very nice transportation option. While I was AF King, I got an easy and a beginner clue nest, which I tried to complete both of, but the easy nest required a body tiara. Now it is possible for me to get a body tiara, but I'd have to play guardians of the rift, which I don't want to do quite yet. So unfortunately this one has to go on the ground. However, the beginner clue gave me a wizard robe, which is actually huge. A blue wizard robe is required for some easy clue emote steps, and this is actually my only source of it other than actually killing wizards with poison dynamite, which will consume a ton of poison dynamite, and this is obviously much better, so glad to have it. In the background, of course, I've been pickpocketing master farmers whenever I can, and here I'm getting 55 thieving. Unfortunately, I only got four belladonna seeds on my entire way from 50 to 55 thieving, so it is not going super great, but I am glad to have a couple, so that will be ready to go when I get the farming level requirement for that belladonna. I've also been continuing to do my tithe farm in the background, as well and I'm actually getting pretty close to 54 farming at this point and 54 farming is when you unlock the second tier of plants inside the tithe farm so rather than continuing to do tithe farm for less experience I thought I'd do some farm runs outside of it and try to get that level 54 farming so that way I can get more experience and be a little bit more efficient with my tithe farm overall however doing farm runs is absolutely atrocious I have just a couple tree seeds to my name which I did plant during this run otherwise I've been doing allotments herbs and flower patches which is pretty slow and with my lack of transportation getting around the world to each farming patch is extremely painful unfortunately i think most of my farm runs are going to be once per day and trying to hit up some of the herb patches more often whenever i'm around the area but for things like trees and allotments i think i'm just going to be hitting those up once per day in the morning it just takes so long to do them all i'd say a complete farm run with everything included trees allotments and everything takes me about an hour which is not great and definitely something i don't want to be doing all the time otherwise that'll be all I'm doing but thankfully the experience does continue adding up and I'm pushing closer to that 54 farming which will help a lot I did get another beginner clue at some point which I did complete and it was just a water staff pretty nice for someone who's on a chunk locked account but for me pretty useless unfortunately as of recording this the update to add the rings of recoil to the magpie impling drop table has not been released but I have no idea when that will actually come into the game and I'll want to be ready for it when it does so I want to be working on some hunter in the background as well so I could be prepared. Now I would normally rely on birdhouses on Fossil Island to do all of my early game hunter experience, but I don't have access to Fossil Island yet and even when I do get access to it, doing birdhouse runs is going to be extremely painful as I won't have access to dig site pendants. So I'm going to rely on the old fashioned way of getting my hunter up by doing regular old hunter. But first I'm actually going to do the Queen of Thieves quest and this might seem a bit odd because this doesn't have much to do with hunter but it will in the early game hunter plan that I've got laid out here. In actuality I should have probably done this quest much earlier on as it gives a little bit of a thieving boost but I totally forgot about it so a little bit of an inefficiency there but getting it done now is nice as it gives me the Piscarillius favor I'll need to do my next hunter method. But before we do that I have to actually get a couple levels just doing good old fashioned one bird snare bird hunting. I did this in Land's End as it it was a little bit easier to get to to actually hunt the birds and while I was waiting for the birds to go into my bird snare I did some basic wood cutting and fletching just to get a couple fletching levels and some arrow shafts for later on tedious of course but definitely not too bad in the long run and we got the 15 hunter that we needed to move on and that's of course to do the red worm hunting for Piscarillia's favor this doesn't give a ton of hunter experience, but it does help boost you up a little bit at the low levels. And I might as well get it done, as obviously I want to get 100% Piscarillia's favor in the future anyway, and this is the most efficient time to do so. It doesn't take very long, it's one of the faster house favors to get, and got me a good couple hunter levels on the way. I also saved every bucket of sand that I got from this process, just so I have them for future crafting. 
It wasn't a ton of sand, but every little bit helps. So I was streaming and I had to step away from the computer for a few minutes and I actually left my client logged in just outside of the gnome stronghold. If you're not familiar with that area, there are several aggressive and dangerous NPCs such as hobgoblins and hill giants in that area. When I came back to my computer, I was literally kitty corner with a hobgoblin that would have easily killed me in just a few hits had it been able to get to me. But thankfully, because of RuneScape's weird pathing, it got stuck on the corner of a plant and wasn't able to get to me. But I literally came back to my computer and to the stream, staring death in the face, which was not great. This doesn't bode well for the long-term hardcore status of this skiller, but that's also not really the focus of the series. So I wouldn't have been heartbroken to lose it this way, but it still would have sucked. After that almost tragic experience though, I did get 27 Hunter up by the Eagle's Peak Hunter area in order to actually go ahead and do that quest next. Of course I want to do Eagle's Peak as it gives a nice little hunter experience boost and unlocks box traps for down the road if I ever want to use them. But before that my farming runs did pay off and I got 54 farming to finally unlock the next tier of plants at the Tithe Farm. So I wound up going ahead and changing focus and focusing back more on Tithe Farm to get the requirement for the Baldadonna that was the initial focus. The middle tier of farming plants at the Tithe Farm is amazing. They give literally three times as much experience when turning them in as the first tier which is really nice. I also forgot to record it, but I did get my first reward other than auto weed from the Tithe Farm, and that was Greg Kohler's can. This is an obvious first pick for me, as I don't have access to humidify or any easier methods of watering the actual plants inside the Tithe Farm. So the Greg Kohler's can is incredibly convenient and will make my future Tithe Farm super nice. After that, I did take a break from Tithe Farm once again, did go back and complete that Eagle's Peak quest again, just to make sure that I got that done. If you're not familiar with this quest, you used to have to kill a level 13 cat it inside of it but now you don't have to you can just intimidate it and it'll run off and you can still progress on the quest that way which is really nice for me after completing that quest it gave me the hunter level required to finally capture gourmet implings which is pretty exciting as gourmet implings have a 1 in 25 drop rate of easy clues and will probably be my primary source of easy clues when i do eventually grind them out. I was really excited, so I went to Pira Pira right away. If you're not aware, there's a plugin you can use to find the Pira Pira entrances outside of Xenaris, where the guaranteed one is. It is crowdsourced data, so it's not always 100% accurate, but it is pretty effective, and I was able to find an access point pretty quickly. However, once I actually got into Pira Pira and started catching a few implings and exchanging them for impling jars, I realized how inefficient it is for me to do this right now. With my hunter level as low as it is, I can't catch any of the more valuable implings that I see as well as my capture rate being so low for the gourmet implings, they just keep flying away. Not to mention, I'll definitely want to come back with a different account that has dark lures so that I can capture the ones that go away more easily. I know this is probably kind of controversial to use dark lure for implings, but it has not yet been condemned by Jagex, so I'm going to take advantage of it if I can. If it changes before I actually do get to use it, oh well, not a big deal. So I captured around 20 gourmets or so, and I did get an easy clue from them, and one of the requirements for that easy clue was a tiara. And I don't yet have 20 smithing to be actually able to make a silver bar in order to craft a tiara, so that was my next goal. Now normally what you do is just complete the knight sword to get an easy boost to 28 smithing from one, but on an iron man that requires going into the wilderness to pick up iron bars from a spawn that's just outside the Ferex Enclave. I didn't want to risk the hardcore status in that way, so I figured I'd just knock out 15 smithing on my own. It doesn't take that long, as long as you just go ahead and buy bronze bars from the shanty pass. It only takes about 200 bronze bars, so it's really not too bad at all, and I was able to smith these into arrowheads that I'll be able to use for some early game fletching later on. After I completed the 15 smithing requirement, I did go ahead and run off and do Dork's quest, as I finally had a chance to turn in all the ores required for that quest, and I needed a small mining boost in order to get up to 20 mining to mine silver anyway. I also stopped at Nurmorf and purchased all the pickaxes that I can there. Unfortunately, the rune pickaxe is the max level pickaxe I will have access to forever on this account. Account. There is no way for me to get a dragon pickaxe at this point, but maybe in the future a change will be made and there will be a way. But for now, the rune pickaxe is best in slot. Completing the knight sword is really straightforward. The only scary part is, of course, mining the blurite, but none of the monsters inside the ice dungeon can hit more than my hit points, so I just eat between hits. It's also single combat, so it's not too bad. I just needed to trap some of the ice warriors around some of the obstacles in order to get my two blurite ores that I needed. With the ores in tow, I was able to complete the knight sword and get a nice smithing boost high enough to be able to smith my silver ores into 
two bars, which is all I really needed. I did go ahead and complete the fallout or easy task of making the blurite limbs as I want to be able to complete this diary at some point, but I'm not sure if it's possible because you have to kill a duck for it. So we'll have to see if we can kill the duck with poison dynamite because I don't think it's worth sacrificing combat experience for, but if we can kill the duck with poison dynamite, that'll be great. Regardless though, of course we have to wait for 30 Slayer to try, but when we get there, it'll be interesting to see. Tuning with the clue, I did have to go all the way to the gnome stronghold once again, and I bought all the gnome robes required for easy clues. There is actually a lot that are required for easy clues, so it's a good idea to take a look at that list when you've come here to purchase one item and just get them all right out of the way. Both the easy and a beginner clue that I had, I did complete them, but of course the reward was trash. And then I got one more easy clue from the gourmets that I actually got, and it was also trash. At some point, I think I'll start stacking up clue caskets instead of opening them immediately all the time, but for now, I just keep opening them because it, it just makes me happy. With that diversion out of the way, it was back to Tithe Farm and back to the grind, and we finally hit 60 farming. It was at this point that I actually realized I don't actually need 63 farming to farm the Belladonna. 60 is sufficient because I can buy a garden pie that boosts my farming level three levels and I can buy these garden pies from the Cook's Guild, which is really easy to get. So with my 60 farming, I actually left the Tithe Farm for quite a while for now. I won't be back until 74 farming and the third tier of plants, as that'll be more efficient in the long run to actually complete the different items that I haven't yet gotten from the Tithe Farm. Of course, then I immediately stopped off and bought some of the garden pies from the Cook's Guild in order to boost that farming level. And finally, after all this time, nearly 40 hours of gameplay, I'm able to plant that first belladonna seed. This was amazingly exciting. I can't wait to harvest this and get some of my first poison dynamite on the account. Now, unfortunately, belladonna does take five hours to grow and there's only one patch of it. So it is pretty tedious to get a large quantity of and I have to be really on top of coming to get it every time it's ready. But five hours later, I got my first belladonna plant, six beautiful cave nightshade into my inventory allowing me to make exactly two poison dynamite. It definitely showed its true colors as to just how much of a bottleneck the cave nightshade is going to be in order to actually craft the poison dynamite, but at this point I was just elated to actually have some of it. We weren't quite done yet though as I still had neglected the other requirements to craft dynamite. I could technically buy it, but it costs over a thousand gold per dynamite and I don't want to do that because I still don't have a ton of money at this point. So instead I just went to Yanil and mined iron there and banked it for 42 mining, which is the requirement for volcanic sulfur, which is one of the ingredients for the dynamite. It was pretty quick and I wanted to get this done anyway, as I don't really see a point in going to the mother load mine at this low of mining level. I'll probably head there when I'm around 55 or so. I also went ahead and started my juniper charcoal furnaces for the dynamite. This is a weird ingredient that you need because it's it takes like 24 hours to actually create, but then you get 6,000 of them, so you don't actually have to do it very often at all. It's a weird mechanic for sure. After getting the juniper charcoal, I went up to the volcanic sulfur and started mining it. Now, mining the sulfur is really scary because the gas clouds could hit ones and twos very rapidly on me, which could kill me before I have a chance to react if I'm not paying very close attention. So my strategy was just to mine the sulfur at the very closest patch to the bank, and then world hop when it depleted rather than waiting for it to come back up or going to a more dangerous patch. I just kept a bunch of high healing food in my inventory at all times and then ate it the moment that a gas cloud got on me and tried to click away. Definitely a really tedious and scary activity, but thankfully I didn't have to be here very long as it only took me about 10-15 minutes to get about 250 50 sulfur, which is all I'm doing for now. So I actually purchased a thousand pots here, which is really nice. It's really close to a bank, and obviously I need the pots for the dynamite. A couple more ingredients that I still need for the dynamite, of course, saltpeter, which has to be mined by hand. Pretty straightforward. I'll try to get a bunch more of this at some point in the future so I don't have to come back here. And then the last thing I needed was balls of wool. Balls of wool could be pretty tedious to get as well, but thankfully the shop at East Ardoin does sell them in bulk, so I was able to purchase them from here. Though it is a little slower than the pots because you're pretty far from the bank and you have to run back and forth. I did get a beginner clue when I was mining and I went ahead and completed that now. Got a duplicate wizard row which is kind of interesting. Not a big deal but it's still kind of a trash clue. A quick diversion to get 55 woodcutting of course doing some more AFKing in the background. And then finally, finally we craft that dynamite. This is actually so incredible. I was feeling elated to be able to actually say that I've crafted dynamite from scratch on a level three Iron Man skiller. The really cool thing about crafting your own dynamite too is it is a really effective alternative way to get Lovakenge favor because you get 0.1 favor for every dynamite that you craft. 
So while I didn't actually go for a max Lovekin's favor at this exact moment, I'll be definitely be maxing out that favor by making dynamite in the future. And then finally I go ahead and attempt to combine my Belladonna with my dynamite and realize that I need 50 fire making to make poison dynamite. There's always one more requirement, isn't there? But thankfully I had plenty of logs from AFK woodcutting, so I was able to knock out 50 fire making very quickly. And with my 50 fire making in tow, I was able to finally craft that poison dynamite. So if you're not familiar with how poison dynamite works, it's a really interesting and kind of unique mechanic in the game. It functions a lot like a cannon in that it rolls its accuracy off your current equipment's accuracy. So in order to make sure that I have the most effective poison dynamite possible, I want to get my best in slot accuracy that I possibly can. Now unfortunately for me as a level 3 skiller, that doesn't give me very many options. The best in slot accuracy equipment that I can think of that I'll be able to wear is a bronze crossbow, full leather armor, and a glory. Now the glory amulet is definitely something that will have to wait as my only source of it is from dragon implings which is a long ways off. But the rest of it I can actually go ahead and get right now and that'll be enough to help for the time being. So I actually had to go ahead and fletch my own bronze crossbow which was a little interesting because I had to get a crossbow string without killing a cow for sinew but you can actually use tree roots to craft a crossbow string instead, so that's what I went ahead and did. Then I had to go ahead and pickpocket some ham members for leather to actually craft the leather armor, and while I was pickpocketing them, I got an easy clue, which I completed for some purple sweets. And purple sweets are actually going to be really nice on this account, as they will be really effective for tick eating in future combat encounters. I won't be able to have enough of them that I think it'll be useful to have in many encounters, but when I have them, I'll definitely be using them. I did finally get all the leather that I needed from ham members, so I went ahead and crafted the full leather armor which gives me a massive plus 28 ranged accuracy, which is nothing to write home about, but it's the highest I can get. Now, I haven't found anything written about this, and I don't know if it matters at all, but I did go ahead and buy some lizard kickers from Shazian as they boost my range level by plus four. I'm pretty sure the cannon doesn't care about your level, only your equipped items accuracy. So I would speculate that the dynamite is likely the same, but I figured it doesn't hurt to boost my range level up and just see if it helps with the accuracy of the dynamite at all. If you weren't aware, lizard kickers are a really nice budget range boosting item. They give a plus four range boost and they only cost a few coins from the Shazian bar here. So with my nearly best in slot equipment and my poison dynamite ready to go, it was time to pick a first target and that was actually going to be a bear. Now why would I be killing a bear as my first target? Well the answer is actually Druidic Ritual. For Druidic Ritual you need four meats, rat meat, bear meat, chicken and beef. The chicken and beef can be bought from the food shop in Port Sarum, but the rat meat and the bear meat need to be obtained by actually killing a rat and a bear. So I went ahead and actually tried to kill the bear with the poison dynamite. but I didn't get lucky. I only had 11 dynamite, and the dynamite only give about a 25% chance to actually poison the NPC they hit. On top of that, I only had about a 45% accuracy with my equipped gear. So while I rolled about four hits on the bear, I didn't get any poison, so. I wasn't able to progress forward in the Druidic Ritual quest at all, but it was still really fun to try out some Poison Dynamite, and I'm really excited for the future. There are so many things I'm looking forward to be able to kill to be able to make progress on this account, and all we need to do is get more Poison Dynamite to do it. And unfortunately, this is where I have to leave you for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for all the support on this new series. It's been so exciting to see all the different people who have also started level 3 Iron Man skillers, and the progress they've been making too. I'm really excited for the future of this account. I feel like we've got the core unlocks in place, and now we can start the exploration phase of the account. All that said, however, we cannot leave without thanking the members who have joined the channel so far. Your support means so much to me and allows me to make these videos. So thank you so much for joining. And of course, we can't leave without giving an extra huge thank you to those members who have joined at that top tier, Kitty Line, Mad Hatter, and Peepo Time. Thank you again for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.